You were just at, in your last sentence mentioning civil, social innovation and civil society. Now, these two terms are often very much interlinked, and social, social innovation has become one of the buzzwords of policy makers around the globe. But nobody really seems to know what social innovation really is. Can you try to explain social innovation to us? I didn't know anything about social innovation until I began to organize this Insight project. And some of the organizations that were interested in joining came from this social innovation world. As I began to interact with, including Euclid Network, for example, and as I began to interact with some of these people, I learned about um, uh, what we can call almost, although the people in the social innovation world don't particularly like this term, almost a movement. What kind of movement? Lots and lots of organizations, we'll get back later to civil society organizations because that has a much longer history. Social innovation as a term of self-identity is relatively new. But what I was finding was a lot of young people who were brought up in from the 1980s on in what I consider, what I, we were calling in my discussion about inside innovation, the innovation society, they believe in innovation processes. What do I mean by that? They believe in a certain kind of entrepreneurialism. I don't mean by that the making money side of entrepreneurialism. I mean the idea, the sort of practical idea that you have a good idea, something you want to do, and then you organize a group that has the competences to go out and do it, and you do it starting small with the idea of getting bigger. To a certain the difference was these people weren't content to insert themselves into what the innovation society had to offer, which was innovate to construct a new artifact, to design and then market a new artifact whose success would be measured by whether or not it was seen to add value in the market sense of the term, that is, would people buy it. They instead had certain social values, and they wanted to or orient their activities, the kinds of projects, the kind of transformations, we might say, in agent and artifact space that they wanted to carry out. They wanted to orient that around what they regarded as important social values, not value as assigned by the market. Now, that didn't mean it necessarily precluded value. Some of these people wanted to be entrepreneurs in the other sense. They were interested in generating artifacts, which could be services, that were socially valuable in their opinion, but which also could sell and in that way become self-sustaining. But many of them didn't have that idea. They were trying to do other kinds of projects where they would get funding as they might, and the idea of financing for such social innovation projects. These people began to identify the innovation part of the term social innovation came from the fact that these were definitely people in the innovation society. And by innovation, they meant this particular way of proceeding to very different, for example, from my generation, which was pre-innovation society. Those of us whose activities back, let's say, in the 1970s were primarily driven by social values of a certain kind, thought of ourselves as revolutionaries, not as innovators. A big difference. These people had social values, which I would say many of them were not so different from the values of the revolutionaries in the 1970s. But their way of acting on them was completely different and had this notion of innovation that I just mentioned before, a completely different way to do projects, to actually make change happen locally, starting small. One of, one of our associates, one of the organizations that we work with in this social innovation world, even though this particular organization doesn't like that term, as I found many don't, has a slogan, think big and act small. And there's something very nice about that idea, in my opinion, although I don't think they want to think that all the actions that start small will finish small, but they may spread in a distributed way, not by their activities, not like in Silicon Valley, a world that I spent many years studying, in which one firm itself starts small but has always the idea of becoming very big, once again in market terms. These projects, if they were successful, with respect to the social values that animated them, I think the founders of these projects had the hope that they would in the end extend and adapt it to different localities, different social uh, situations might have to be different. 
but the ideas could spread, and of course they spread once again by use of new kinds of ICT. So my view was the social part of social innovation re referred to the desire to have animating values for the kinds of projects that were undertaken that were socially directed rather than directed with respect to the values of the mar the value of the market. The innovation part came from the fact that this was a new way of thinking with once again the Silicon Valley is the kind of high church about how you go about making changes. You make changes in society by concrete projects in which you do one thing, so I'll probably make one kind of new artifact, which actually may have more than one use, but one thing, work very, very hard in that, start locally, and extend out from there. But through that kind of practice, not at the very highest level, as silly us were doing in the 1970s, of reconstructing a vision of what society would be overall and somehow trying to bring about changes in a moment in the spirit, for example, of well, we can go back to 1789 for the very beginning of this way of social engineering at the macro level. This is micro level social, and engineering isn't really even the right word. Quite the right word. So, but what I found was, since the, because the innovation society, in our view, through its dynamics, was generating endogenously social crises, and since the innovation society ideology was preventing essentially public administrations from dealing with these crises as its primary agenda since nothing could get in the way of the economy which was now hegemonous and since innovation was the motor of the economy the only way they could think of dealing with these crises is to promote new innovations which are supposed to new kinds of products which somehow are supposed to solve these endogenous crises like we see in the energy field now and that wasn't going to do the trick because many of these problems were not just a were not amenable to constructing new artifacts to solve. They were really problems of social divide, problems of social justice, problems of cohesion, problems of integration in society. And so public administrations, particularly at the European level, I must say, began to see, aha, social innovation might be a way we can give somebody else this responsibility. We can privatize the need to construct a socially cohesive society. I personally think that's disastrous, but I think it's a strong temptation laboring under the constraints of the innovation society ideology to make social innovation as a term suddenly get high on the agenda, meaning something quite different than what it means to these young, what I would call idealistic pragmatists who wanted to do innovation kinds of projects driven by social values. So the term gets used by lots of people in lots of different meanings. There are certain kinds of businesses also who are now saying, we're in favor of social innovation too. Because after all, it's in the interest of everybody to have social cohesion and to at least be seen to be supporting projects towards social justice, but easier to leave it to somebody else, to private initiative, to innovation processes, which are co coherent with a larger view. So it's a term very much under contestation. And in my view, what we need to do is look directly at the people who identify with that label and are carrying out projects, understand what kinds of projects they're doing, what constraints are imposed on those projects by those people being in themselves incorporated in our innovation society with the constraints that that ideology imposes, and the, and the sense in which they might actually be organizing counter movements which perhaps could lead to the construction of a more socially sustainable future than we seem to be headed to on our own devices. But it's not clear, is what I want to say. It's clear why so many people are finding this term attractive. What is not clear is that there's any essence to what this term is. It's emerging. Its meaning is coming into being. Now it's a link. Thank you. You mentioned quite a lot of uh, very interesting points, a lot of which are linked to our project in Naples. I'm just um, mentioning fostering private initiatives, think locally and then expand. We are trying to get social innovators from around the world to be part of our program where we try to tackle specific challenges typical for Naples.